This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top-notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on a deck that is legal for the June 12, 2017 format, and is a fun little concept I've been messing around with just as, you know, testing possibilities for decks that can be played under this new format, with Norden Band, with all these different things taking place, with Grassless Greener decks essentially not being playable because Grass is at 1, stuff like that, basically uh, forming into some theories for some, you know, decks that could be potentially played, and so I might play this deck on the channel in the next couple of days it ultimately depends on whether or not you guys want to see it be played so definitely let me know that in the comments down below or like this video to signify that you want to see me playing this deck but what this deck is is just as you can see on screen it is a Shadol Predaplant deck with a little splash of zoo in it uh, the only zoo cards that are being played are the whip tails in the main in order to be you know a good card to go into off your Scorpio play off of Invoker and then you just stack up into the XC stack so you get a defensive line in the form of Dryden, and the Dryden will in theory be pretty large uh, so like there's that and as well as uh, Chaka 9 allowing you to get extra fusion materials if that's something you need now why I wanted to play this deck why I wanted to play Shadals and why I wanted to try it out is because with the Scorpio Darling Cobra interaction you have access to search Shadal fusion and El Shadal fusion which is both very very important El Shadal fusion has not been very accessible to us ever since it went to one now this deck still is crippled in essence of how it can out certain threats because we don't have Construct, but Dryden't and Whiptail essentially kind of fill that function a little bit. So that's kind of what I wanted to mess around with. And Shadal Fusion is forever going to be that card that cannot be power creeped, even going into Link format, because of the fact that this card says if your opponent controls a monster summoned from the extra deck. Meaning that it still gets its effect if your opponent uh, summons a Link monster. If this card said, like, if your opponent controls a Fusion Synchro or Xyz monster, then it would have definitely, you know, had a chance to be power crept out of the game. But anyway, the deck list is just a beta list of what I've been messing around with. I've been testing it a little bit and it's been doing relatively well. Three should all Beast, one should all Dragon, three should all Squamata, two should all Hedgehog, and one should all Falco. Honestly, these ratios can probably move around a bit and maybe cut one Beast for a second Falco. So, you know, you have a little bit more of a concrete lineup or maybe just do two of all of them across the board. But there's a higher Shadal lineup in this deck specifically because of the increased access that the deck has to fusion cards in the form of your Scorpio can get you Shadal Fusion, get you El Shadal Fusion, you've got your Triple Allure of Darkness, which are you know draw power cards, and hell, even this uh, Predator Plant dude whose name I cannot even pronounce is, is a polymerization type card for Winda which you could definitely use, um, utilize, you know, in terms of things. You got way, way too much accessibility into different ways to get Shadal monsters out of your hand. And we're not even playing, like, Black Sheep or uh, Polymerization, because, like, we could add those cards to the deck if we wanted to, search with Broad Bull and get additional fusion summons, but they're really just not needed. But anyway, like I said, th that 10 Shadal lineup could change. The ratios could change. One Beast could get cut for, like, a second... Falco, or I could just make it two of each across the board, because sometimes the extra dragon does come up. Uh, but otherwise, carrying on, the only three zoo cards in the main deck are three copies of Whiptail. Like I've already said, these are just here so that you can summon one out of your deck off of Invoker, you can perform your zoo exceed stack, and then you can just search with Broad Bull for another Whiptail, and that gives you a 2400 attack Dryden't that forms a form of removal via popping or banishing. So that's pretty like good to pair up with your Winda. It's a little soft lock there because Winda lets your opponent not be able to special summon more than once a turn, and then Dryden can pop whatever one monster they special summon. So the biggest problem this deck currently has is dealing with Masterpiece. And the thing is, is that the way to fix that is like to add more zoo cards, like add rats, add tinkies, add barrages. But that's not something I want to dedicate the room for, so it might be like going for kaijus. But anyway, uh, triple Lone Fire and triple Scorpio, you know, this is a good starter card. Scorpio is an amazing starter card. Uh, you, you take the risk of getting Ash Blossomed on Scorpio or Lone Fire, but that's a risk you really have to take with this deck. Um, you just kind of have to go for it. 
um, and just hope that things work out in your favor, essentially. Uh, but the the yield that you get from this is insane, because if you're doing it going second and your opponent has an extra deck card out, then you're searching Shadal Fusion off your Darling Cobra, which means that you're going to be activating it for free, yielding a plus two, essentially. Uh, you get all these sorts of things. So this just is an additional starter card, additional ways to get to your fusion spells, which are basically would allow you to play the game. One copy of Darling Cobra, because I'm not a fan of bricking on multiple copies of it. Um, I'm I was playing two Darling Cobra, uh, no, no, no. I was playing two Darling Cobra, uh, but then I cut one for this motherfucker, the, uh, the Kalamado Sundu, uh, Kalamia Dono Sundu, whatever. This thing, the, the weird spitting lizard, <laughs> because this thing allows you to fuse into dark monsters. You can use a Shadal monster, and this is a dark to make Winda. You can fuse into your, uh, Predaplant, um, uh, Rafflesia thing, or you can do Starving Venom if you have a Shadal monster on the field. Or you could just go Scorpio into it and then go straight for Starving Venom. It gives you a few different options for what you're capable of doing as far as your fusion plays. And it's just another fusion starter card, which is pretty key, pretty important. But uh, the rest of the monster lineup is just hand traps. You know, this deck you know, utilizes defensive lines pretty well um, in terms of being able to wall up with Winda and possibly a Dryden. And then also have access into things to back you up to make your Winda basically even more of a threat. And that is where Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, and Max C basically fall into line. And then for the spells, three should all fusion. Like I said, this card is impossible to be power creeped in the game. Uh, like there's a reason Construct is banned because Construct is the one card like answer to every extra deck card in the game as long as Shadal Fusion exists. So Construct will probably never come back. But Shadal Fusion itself still gives you amazing access into so many different things because of Shekinaga existing because of Winda existing, and because of Grista existing. Like, those three enough are enough to sort of carry the uh, capabilities of this card just a tad. Shekinaga being arguably the best one going second into established boards, because you can activate it in the face of a Dryden't, and then, you know, you get the Shekinaga, which can negate the Dryden't, you know, shit like that. But anyway, one El Shadal Fusion, this card is super accessible now because we have access into Scorpio and the Darling Cobra. We're essentially playing seven copies of it because if you already open Shadal Fusion, you're just going to search this off the other one. It's very simple. Uh, three Allure of Darkness just for draw power. You have a lot of darks in this deck actually because of all the Predaplant monsters and then the 10 card Shadal lineup. So it's definitely always live for draw power, letting you dig further into your deck, get to your hand traps, get to your lone fires, get to your fusions, get to your Scorpios, get to all of these cards. One copy of Soul Charge, just to, you know, give yourself a nice big, you know, recursion push. Uh, even though there's not really a lot you can do with the Soul Charge, other than just like commit into like big things like Chimera, Rafflesia, um, and like stuff like that, making like extra Shekinagas. Like there's 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 things you can do with it that are definitely good, but it's not nearly as impactful as it was in previous builds. But then an upstart to bring the deck consistency down, uh, to bring the deck consistency up, bringing the deck size down. Foolish Burial, because this is basically any Shadal monster. And then just the only traps in the deck are a playset of Solemn Strikes. Uh, you could cut a card, put Warning in, probably cut like an Ash Blossom and put Warning in, make it a little bit more well-rounded. Um, give you that one really niche card against Masterpiece if you have it. Uh, but otherwise, there's not really... Like I said, this, this deck sp list specifically, as I have it, struggles really hard against Masterpiece. And I'm not sure what the solution to that is as of right now um, in terms of how I want to go about deck building but for the extra deck two copies of Shekinaga one copy of Grista this card actually comes up a lot because of the fact that you have spare lone fires in your deck that you could be drawing after you do a Scorpio play as well as you have duplicate ash blossoms that you could be drawing so this card actually comes up a fair bit uh, and it's also always just decent to make because it's basically a solemn warning against like inherent special summons uh, so that's pretty decent especially since there's a higher Shadal count in this deck meaning that it's easier to make this guy's effect sort of live. Uh, but then two windows because this card is, you know, obviously really good to pair with Dryden. One Predaplant Chimera Rafflesia because this is a very decent card to utilize with your uh, with your lizard dude. And, um, and you're able to make this, it's able to do things, and then if it goes to Grave, it can search a Polymerization or Fusion card during the next turn. So even if you're not going for a Darling Cobra play, uh, play you can go into Scorpio, into this, into Chimera or Flasia. This pressures your opponent a good bit because its effect is pretty damn good in terms of what it allows it to beat over. And then when it dies, it can search for Shadal Fusion, which is a good follow-up. And then Starving Venom Fusion Dragon is just a pretty decent boss monster. It's a little bit harder to summon, 
but it is very, very decent in terms of what its effect allows you to get. Now for Synchros, just a uh, Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend to be generic board wiping, and then Black Rose Dragon to be generic board wiping. We want things like that. Uh, we want very high impact Synchros for these two slots. Uh, but then, one Zodiac Dryden, one Broad Bull, one Shock and Nine, one Borbo. Now, why specifically these? Well, Dryden and you know, Broad Bull are very self-exclamatory, I would assume. Shock and Nine is actually an interesting pick because of the fact that what it allows you to do is it allows you to detach a material and then special summon uh, one of your Xyz monsters back to be fusion material for like Shekinaga if you need an extra material for fusing. Uh, it's actually just very good for that because what you can do is you can go into your uh, your Scorpio play into Whiptail out of your deck, Whiptail over your Borbo, and then you can go um, then you can go uh, Broad Bull on top of that, detach the Borbo to search a second Whiptail. Then you can put Shock and Nine on top of that, detach the uh, the Broad Bull to summon one of your Xyzes back from Grave, and now you have an Earth material for fusion summoning. That's actually pretty important. And then you have the Dry that you can put on top of that, and then put the Whiptail under it, and then it's 2400. So you were able to you know kind of extend your reach a bit further. Uh, so the restrictions that Shock and Nine puts on the card, where it can't be used as an Xyz material and its effect is negated, is not really that big of an issue because of the fact that you're usually going to be looking to fuse away with that card regardless. Uh, but then for just rank threes, one copy of MX Saber Invoker, and then one copy of Super Quantum Mech Beast Grand Pulse, just to be a generic MST-like card, uh, because when you're going like Scorpio into Darling Cobra, uh, you can make this instead of Invoker, and then you're able to, you know, do some stuff in the form of popping a back row and then doing something like activating shit off fusion or doing whatever it's uh it's very it's very niche like all of these cards have a specific role that they are intending to fill uh but like i said this is a very beta oriented deck list uh if you have any suggestions definitely leave them in the comments down below i'm trying to figure out the best way for this deck to be able to deal with masterpiece because that's the biggest problem that i'm having with it currently uh, but otherwise like this deck looks like this desk this deck is pretty solid in terms of what I've been testing And if you want me to play this on the channel for some you know future Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel videos Then definitely let me know in the comments down below But anyway that has been the deck profile and my reasonings for some of the choices Like I said it's a it's a list in testing and if you have any suggestions leave them in the comments down below But otherwise as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below overall If you want to see me play this again let me know or like the video one of those two things It'll show me, or both of them, if you really want to get your point across, it'll let me know that you want to see me play this deck uh, and want to show some Shadal uh, hype train on the channel, basically. But other than that, as always, links are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It helps me have some funding for future projects that I want to do for the channel, as well as helps me upgrade some equipment to make better quality content and stuff like that for the channel in the future, hopefully, as well as doing some live streaming and stuff like that. So if you want to support the channel and want to do it in the most efficient and best way possible, then definitely go check out the patreon reward tiers and see what tickles your fancy but other than that if you like this video give it a thumbs up smash that like button to let me know that you like the content i've been producing and want to see more of it other than that if you are not subscribed and you're new here then I'd definitely please subscribe if you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content and i'd love to welcome you to this little community based around this channel about this basically dysfunctional family that exists around this channel with me at the helm even though i don't consider myself super competent or super like willing or i super like capable of being taken seriously but apparently a bunch of people just do and really like my thoughts and theories so there's a channel built around it now <laughs> which i still think is insane but regardless of that again that is it for this video again let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below thanks for watching as always thanks for your time as usual guys and take care i will see you in the next video